Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Kai and in today's video we are going to unlock the power of 2D tracking in After Effects where you can track your photos, videos and text to different types of elements in your footage. So let's jump into this. So as you can see, I'm getting in trouble again for being late, true story. And today we're going to show you how you can create a similar effect in After Effects by tracking something onto your mobile phone. So let's jump into After Effects. So here we are right now inside of After Effects. And the very first thing that I want to do is drop my footage into After Effects. If I go to my footage, you can see I've got my Kai is late again text and I am going to drop that into my project panel and then I'm going to drag my footage and create a new composition. And as you can see, if I scroll from side to side, you will notice that there is a parallaxing movement and that is because I filmed this shot on the Zeppelin Micro 2 slider and I've got a little behind the scenes shot here of me getting ready to take the shot and I do apologize for the mess in the studio. It is generally quite messy like this, unfortunately. And also you'll see that I'm trying to watch Netflix at the same time while trying to create video content. And so it's no wonder why it takes me so long to release videos on YouTube. So back to our footage now, and what we want to do is to create a tracking point on our mobile phone so that we can add some text or some footage or basically anything to this mobile phone. And to do that, we need to come over here. We are going to open this tracker tab and at the moment, nothing is highlighted and that's because we need to select our footage. So we select our footage and also make sure that our current time indicator is at the beginning of our timeline. So if we come back now, we have a few options. One of them is track camera. One of them is track motion, warp stabilizer and stabilize motion. Now, both of these are for stabilizing shaky footage. So we won't be using those. And track camera is actually used for 3D space. Now, because our camera is moving on the X axis, so it's moving side to side, it's actually a parallaxing shot. So it's not in 3D space. It uses the X and Y axis. And so because of that, we don't want to use our 3D track, but we want to use track motion instead. If you do want to know a little bit more about 3D tracking, I do have a video of that on YouTube and I'll leave a link in the cards and in the description box below. So we've decided because it's on the X and Y axis, we are going to go to track motion. So we will select track motion and it opens up a new tab, as you can see here, and also provides a tracker. Now I'm going to zoom in using the scroll wheel, hit H on the keyboard to bring up my hand and move the screen. And then I'm going to bring up V to bring up my cursor again. And I'm going to click inside this track point box and move it over to my phone. When it comes to 2D tracking, it's always good to use an area of high contrast. And thankfully on the back of my iPhone, there is a large contrast here between this white dot and also the two cameras. So I can actually grab my tracking point and put it over this white dot on my phone. The reason we have two boxes here is because After Effects will be checking this first box where this crosshair is to find the tracking point. And also when it scans the screen, it won't scan the whole of the screen. It will just scan this outer box to look for this inner box and also this crosshair. Now do be warned that if you select the crosshair individually, you can drag it out of the actual boxes. So make sure that when you move the tracking boxes, you move them all together like this. Okay, so now we're ready to track and there's a few things we can do. If we come over to our tracker box, what we can do is we can analyze forward by one frame or we can just let after Effects play out and analyze and decide for itself what it wants to do. So for the most part, I'm going to zoom out slightly. I'm going to press play and I'm going to allow After Effects to decide where the tracking points should be. So I'm going to hit analyze forward. And you can see while it's doing that track, it's actually doing a great job of sticking to the camera. In fact, I will wait until it starts to mess up before I intervene by hitting the stop button. Right, so at this moment in time, when there's more erratic movement and I pull the phone away, the tracking points start to mess up. And we can correct that manually. Click on our layer down here and we hit U on the keyboard to bring up our keyframes. These keyframes have been generated automatically by After Effects and you will notice that there are three points and one of them here is the confidence. And the confidence is essentially how confident 
After Effects is that that tracking point is correct. And throughout, we have a very high level of confidence in the 90s to show that After Effects is very confident that these tracking points are accurate. But when we start getting to these points, you will know that the confidence drops to about 55% because actually After Effects is not sure if it has nailed the tracking. And of course, it hasn't. So at this moment in time, in fact, if we use our pyramids, we can zoom in slightly to these tracking points. What we can do is we can move forward a frame at a time. So we come to our analyze buttons and we move one frame forward and again and again. And we can see that After Effects is starting to mess up slightly. It's going to about 68% and we can actually manually move these tracking points and After Effects will update that tracking information for that particular frame. Again, we can move forward using the Analyze Forward tool. We can move forward again. And again, it's not quite right. So we'll move that manually and we can proceed to do this all the way to the end of the footage. So what I'll do at this junction is I'll just quickly go one frame ahead and correct where those tracking points should be. So that's roughly my track. And as you can see, it's not it's not very accurate. I'm just guessing a lot of the time where I think the tracking point should be. And in fact, it ends there and I can't move anymore because the phone has disappeared off the screen. But for the most part, these tracking points here all look fairly accurate. And that's because there's not as much dramatic movement in our shots. So now we have our tracking points and we've done a relatively good job of tracking that data. What we want to do now is add in a null object. So I'll go to layer, new, null object. And here is my null object. If you don't know what a null object is, it's used to store data and to control things. And in this instance, we're going to use it to store this tracking information to help us later on add things to our tracking point. Before that though, we need to add this tracking data to our null object. How can we do that? Well, we have to come back over to our tracker and this time we're going to select edit target. So here it says apply motion two, and we want it to attach that tracking data to null one. So we're going to hit okay. Nothing has happened. We still need to apply it to the X and Y axis. And we can do that by going to apply and it will ask us what dimensions we want to use. And we want to use X and Y and we hit okay. So now we're brought back to the main composition and we can see our null object here. It is tracked very nicely to this little section here on the back of our phone. In fact, at this point in time, we can now add some text and have that tracked to our phone. So if I go to the text tool and I write something like, hey, that's really large. So I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to bring up the scale, scale this down, and I'm going to pop this near my phone but when i move forward nothing seems to happen and that's because it's not yet attached to the null which has the tracking data in order to do that we need to pick whip or parent the hey text to our null and we can do that as simply as grabbing this whip over here and attaching it to the null once that happens the hey becomes a child layer and the null is the parent layer so watch this now if we scrub through time the hey is actually attached to our phone. If you don't see this parent and link, you might need to add it into this menu. So right click, go to columns and make sure parent and link is selected. Alternatively, you don't need to physically whip or pick that whip. You can also go to this drop down menu and select null one from there to make the hey or text object a child of the tracking data in the null. Now, I actually have a text message template that I've imported here. And if I click on that, you can see that it creates a text message effect. And what I want to do is add this into my footage so that it looks like I'm getting in trouble for being late again. I can do this by going back into my comp. I'm just going to hide my hey layer and I'm going to drag my text message template into my composition. And you will see that it starts to drag out over time. And I've timed this already. What I want to do first and foremost is I want to make this a 3D layer. 
like so. And this will allow me to rotate it so that it aligns with my phone. And I can do that by hitting R on the keyboard and then rotating on the Y axis and slightly on the X axis. So now if I move this next to my phone, like so, and I go back to the beginning, I can start to line this up with my phone. And then all I need to do again is take the pick whip, parent it to the null. And now that composition is tracked to my phone and it looks like I'm sending and receiving text messages. Now, if you actually want this text message After Effects template, let me know. I'll drop a link to it in the description box of this video. And this is a great place to mention that if you haven't done so already, go and add yourself to the Kai Creative Facebook and Instagram accounts to stay up to date with all of our creative happenings. So I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. As I mentioned earlier, I do have a video on 3D tracking in After Effects, and I'll leave a link to that down below and in the cards above. So make sure you go and check that out if you want to learn how to do some 3D tracking. And as mentioned in previous videos, we are making a library of After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Photoshop tutorials to really help take your content creation to the next level. But we do have a bunch of camera reviews planned for this year as well as camera guides planned for this year in 2022. So all I've got left to say, guys, is thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement, and inspire. And I will catch you next time on Kai Creative.